this morning to change a Goodman evaporator coil in a GPH package unit. I installed the unit in fall uh, 2009 and it just like a lot of the units from that time period from Goodman and several other manufacturers it, it has started to leak. So I'm going to replace that today and uh, that's probably all I'm going to do today and then take it easy. Here's our GPH 42. Or 1442, 14 sear with the gigantic hood. So I had to make that hood. It took a lot of metal. We're going to start taking it apart and get the old evaporator out of there and get the new one in. I made sure the voltage was off by checking it here at the contactor. You can check it again down there at the heat strips. It's two circuits. There's our X13 motor, defrost controller, dual run cab, and transformer come around here it's our line dryer orifice even though this is 14 sear it's still an orifice and we have our evaporator coil all the way down through here and over here you have our reversing valve and components like that but we'll be taking this bad boy out and replacing it with a new one I have two recovery cylinders and I'm always well I'm never labeling them what's inside of them which is probably a bad idea. We should always label them. But in case you don't label them, you can always figure it out by looking at the pressure. And you can see that. It's around, I don't know, 45 ish I hear today. And you see, according to the chart there, we have R410A. Because at 45 degrees, that's R410A. If it were 75 outside, you say, oh, this is, R, this is R22. So that's a way to tell if your R22 and your R410A recovery cylinders in case you forgot to label them as I have done. I've got the world's greatest recovery machine in action right now. We're pulling down the uh, pulling out the refrigerant here. We've got the testo gauge down there because we got R410A here. And then hopefully in a couple minutes I'll be all done with this and I can go ahead and get this old evaporator out. We're gonna really I'm actually gonna slide it up the top probably. Kinda has a rail it fits on. I'll see this one's kinda that's a little bit of a pain to buy, but it's not. Now that the recovery is over, I have to take the coil out, the old coil. So what I'm going to do, my plan of attack, is I'm going to actually cut it back here. Because it has to slide up. I'll cut it back here, sweat it off right here, and then I can once I cut it off here, I'll be able to twist it down and sweat it off that way and bring it out. Pick the coil up, put the new one down back back down in here, sweat the same piece back in here, put a couple in here, and put them back together. And that is the plan, and it uh, should work out just fine. I am putting nitrogen pressure on the unit now. I have replaced the coil. There's our new coil down there. Only had to have one joint there, coupling, put it together. It actually came with this stub built into it right here, so that was kind of nice. So now I'm just going to put about 150 pounds on it and do a nitrogen test, and if that's clear, we'll put it into a vacuum. 14 minutes have gone by and we're looking pretty good. A uh, little tip. I'm doing this uh, temperature weighted nitrogen test on the Testo. I had my clamps out here, here, and here. Uh, that didn't work as well because the sun was actually heating up the pipe and the pressure was staying the same because only a small section of the piping was in the sun. It was actually making it look like it was losing pressure, it, but it wasn't. So I moved the clamps inside the unit. So now I will be able to uh, get a more accurate reading in the shade. And once I did that, the, the pressure uh, equalized out according to their scale they use here. But uh, just a little tip. If you got a small area in the sun, just don't use that area. Okay. So now I'm going to go put it into a vacuum because we've been holding pressure. And then recharge it. After we charge up the unit here, I'm going to break out this tool. We're going to go ahead and hook it up now and use... Uh, the Zebrastat here for a remote thermostat. So we can actually run this machine from out here at the uh, electrical panel. Uh, the good use of this is if you want to use it on the, like a, an RTU or something like that, you want to fiddle with you know, putting jumpers out and stuff like that. You can just turn on and off any uh, function you want to have running or not running. So I'll set it up and then I'll show you guys what it looks like and how you use it. I have hooked up the Zebrastat to the package unit. What I did is you can kind of clip right into the circuit, but I've actually disconnected the thermostat and clipped it right into the wires going to the unit. 
And basically what I what you do is it's powered by 24 volts. So I come right to the transformer, get the hot from one side, common from the other side. Just stick uh, a hot to hot and common to common, don't reverse them either. Keep your reds to reds and blues to blues, which is you know most of the time the color code. Uh, the blue may be brown for common or even black, but the red's pretty universal. Everything else you just go by the function. Heat one for the uh, heat pump, I'm using that as the auxiliary heat. And that is the white wire, and as you see I clip on to the white wire coming from the unit. And the cool one is yellow, it's pretty common, and that's been clipped on over here. Violet's cool too, there's a single stage, so that's irrelevant. Um, orange is reversing valve, you see that's right there. And then we have the fan is green, and that is right here. So all of them are clipped on. Of course we don't use gray for heat two either. We don't use gray or violet since we don't have second stage here. Uh, theoretically I guess we could use that for the heat strips on heat two, but it's just, uh, I just chose to use the white. The other two are clipped on down here to keep them out of the way. So as soon as I get done charging, I will uh, hook this up and we will control it with this uh, remote thermostat. I have weighed in most of the charge and I'm going to go ahead and turn the machine on and cooling to take the rest of it. Or actually I can turn on heating either because we have our low side port already hooked up since there's only the one on the uh, package unit. First thing I'm going to do is since all of our wires are hooked up, hooked up to the transformer, I'm going to flip the switch for fan first. We'll listen for it. You hear the fan come on there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit heat one. Or, no, not heat one, but uh, sorry, cool one. Because on this particular machine, we're going to hit cool one, but it's going to be heat because the reversing valve is not going to be energized. See now the compressor's on an outdoor fan motor. I'm going to go ahead and check the charge, and then we'll fiddle with this a little bit more. We are all done weighing in the charge. It was nine pounds six ounces. Was the charge required? You see, we're still running in heat here. An unknown temperature on the inside of the house right now. 355 on the high side, 104 on the low side. So now we can go ahead and turn it off. We'll put it in cool in just a second. So our system is offline except for the fan. And then in just a moment, I'll uh, flip it into cool. Okay, we're going to go ahead and energize the reversing valve. You hear it click over right there. And then we're going to hit cool one, yellow. And now it's up and running again, except this time it'll be running in cooling. And uh, we'll test it out for a few minutes in cooling to make sure everything's squared away. And then we are pretty much done. And if the guy ever comes to the door, I'll definitely be done. We are all squared away in air conditioning, and so we are done. I'm going to turn the power off here in a second and rewire the thermostat back up to the unit. I'm going to shut these down one at a time. First one, compressor. And then we can shut down the reversing valve. You heard that. And then shut down the fan. And then in a moment, the fan will have a delay. Uh, I think it's about 60 seconds and then it'll be shut down for good too so we're all done change out the evaporator I was going to change the thermostat but the guy's not coming to the door so I'll have to do that on a different day but see you guys on the next